now let's see about uh, deadlock avoidance algorithm uh, the best example for deadlock avoidance is uh, taking the medicine before the disease so that means during the operating system design only operating system designers takes necessary precautions so that uh, deadlock never occurs into the system uh, if the resource type contains a single instance uh, then we use a resource allocation graph algorithm uh, already we have seen resource allocation graph algorithm in the previous video uh, whereas if the resource type contains more than one instance that means if the resource type contains multiple instances then we can use this banker's algorithm uh, here uh, each process must specify the maximum number of resources that it requires so that operating system will checks by allocating those resources to the process is there is any possibility of deadlock or not if there is any possibility of deadlock by allocating resources to the process then operating system never allocates those resources to the process whereas if there is no possibility of deadlock uh, then operating system allocates resources to the process so now let's see about uh, this algorithm banker algorithm uh, in banker algorithm we have uh, safety algorithm as well as uh, request resource algorithm uh, in this video we will see about uh, safety algorithm in uh, the banker algorithm uh, let's see this problem here after that we will see the algorithm uh, here we have uh, allocation maximum available and uh, so these are the resources that are given here uh, so let us assume that totally there are uh, five processes present in the system from p0 to the p4 and assumes that uh, there are totally three resource types are present in the system so the first resource type is a second resource type b third resource type is c uh, here resource type means uh, it may be any resource it may be a printer or scanner or hard disk or ram or cache so any hardware device okay uh, let uh, we have uh, 10 printers connected to the computer so that uh, we have 10 instances of resource type A. Uh, next we have uh, 5 instances of resource type B. We have 7 instances of resource type C. So it means that uh, let A is a printer. So let 10 printers are connected to the computer. Next uh, let uh, 5 scanners are connected to the computer. Next let 7 RAMs are connected to the computer. Okay. So every resource type contains a collection of uh, resources okay so what is a here a means 10 b means 5 c means 7 so 10 5 7 are uh, the total number of available resources in the system uh, now uh, here each process must specify what is the maximum need of each resource type here we have five processes present in the system for p naught for resource type a the maximum need is 7 so that means out of 10 instances, 10 resources, it requires 7 resources. Next for resource type B, the maximum demand is 5. So that means out of 5, it requires 5. Next for, for C, the maximum demand is 3. So that means out of 7, it requires 3. So here each process must, must specify what is the maximum need of each resource type for the corresponding process. At a time t naught, let us assume that uh, so this is nothing but allocation. Uh, this allocation specifies how many resources are allocated for that process. Okay, so zero or zero resources are allocated for resource type A. One resource type is allocated for B. Zero resource type is allocated for C. So likewise for each process, we have allocation as well as maximum. Next, based on allocation and maximum, based on allocation and the total number of resources we can calculate the available resources for a the total number of resources are 10 out of 10 how many resources are allocated here so 2 3 2 so for p1 uh, 2 resources are allocated for p2 3 are allocated for p3 2 resources are allocated so out of 10 so 2 plus 3 means 5 5 plus 2 means 7 so out of 7 out of 10 7 resources are allocated. So 10 minus 7 means 3. So 3 resources are now available in here. Next, let us take B. 
the total number of resources of we are uh, five so out of five how many are allocated so one one so two are allocated so five minus two means three so now three instances of resource type b are available next if you take c we have seven resources out of seven so two plus one means three three plus two means uh, five so out of seven five resources are allocated so seven minus five means two so here the available number of resources are three three two and next uh, we have to calculate the need so what is the remaining what is the need of that process okay uh, here we can get need by subtracting maximum and allocation so the formula for the need is max minus allocation okay so here for a for p not for a what is the maximum demand seven out of seven zero are allocated so seven minus zero means seven next for b the maximum demand is five out of five one is allocated so five minus one means four next three minus zero means three if you take p1 then for a what is the need here three minus two means one two minus zero means two two minus zero means two so one double two so likewise we can calculate the need also and now let's see about uh, the safety algorithm after discussing safety algorithm we will solve this problem with the help of this algorithm uh, here we have four steps the first step is uh, work is equal to available so this available contains available number of resources of each resource type so we have two places available in a variable called work so work is equal to available next finish of i is equal to false for i is equal to 0 comma 1 up to so on n minus 1 <coughs> here the initial value of the i is 0 next i value becomes 1 i value becomes 2 let here n value is 5 so we have to take the processes from p0 to the p4 so initially we have to take finish of 0 is equal to false next to finish of 1 means false finish of 2 means false finish of 3 means false finish of 4 means false here this false indicates that the corresponding process is not executed till now so finish of 0 is equal to false it specifies that process 0 is not executed next to finish of 1 is equal to false it specifies that process 1 is not executed like that so this is the first step now let's see the second step find an i such that here what is i i means this process number it starts from 0 to the 4 such that here we have two conditions the first condition is finish of i is equal to false so that means that process is not executed till now as well as need is less than or equal to work what is work here available if need of the process if need of the process is less than or equal to available then only operating system can allocate resources to the process so if need is less than or equal to work then we can say that operating system can allocate available resources to the corresponding process so that the process can complete its execution whenever that process completed that, ex that execution then uh, uh, we can remove allocated resources from that process and add them to the available resources let's see the third step work is equal to work plus allocation let us assume that uh, uh, p naught need is less than or equal to available resources so p naught can complete its execution so whenever p naught completed its execution then we can uh, we then we can remove the allocated resources from the p naught and add them to the available resources so work is equal to work plus allocation next finish of i is equal to true it specifies that the process is executed if finish of i is false then it indicates that that process execution is not completed whereas if finish of i is true then it indicates that that process execution is completed next go to step two so likewise we have to check for uh, the remaining processes also let's see the last step if finish of i is equal to true for all i that means for 0 1 2 3 4 like that then the system is in safe state so if uh, for all the processes if finish is true then we can say that uh, we can allocate resources to the all the processes in a successful manner so that state is known as safe state so safe state indicates that uh, the order in which the processes are to be executed here we have five processes so out of five processes it specifies some order so in that order operating system allocates resources to the processes 
here we have two types of states are available safe state unsafe state safe safe state specifies that there is no deadlock safe state specifies the order in which the processes are to be executed so the order in which the resources are allocated to the process whereas unsafe state means there is a deadlock in the system okay so if finish of i is it true then we can say that there is no deadlock that means we will get some safe sequence whereas for some processes if finish of i is false then we can say that there is a deadlock in the system now let us solve this problem with the help of this algorithm so what is the first step work is equal to available so work is equal to available so work is equal to here what are the available resources 332 so now the value of the work is 332 next finish of i is equal to false for i is equal to 0 to 4 so this is nothing but our finish so finish of zero value false one false two false three false four plus so this false denotes that this process these processes are not executed till now next step find a i such that finish of i is false so for all the processes finish is false only next need is less than or equal to one <coughs> so let us take the first one peanut process need is less than or equal to one what is the need of p naught 743 so 7 what is the need of p naught the need of p naught is 743 so 743 743 is less than or equal to what is work value 332 so this condition is false why because here uh, what is uh, resource type a need 7 here resource type uh, a available resources 3 so 7 less than 3 this is false next we have to compare b with b so 4 less than 3 so this is also false 3 less than 2 this is also false here a value should be greater than or equal to this need a value should be greater than or equal to need need a value should be less than or equal to work a value next to need b should be less than or equal to work b need c should be less than or equal to work c so then only we can allocate the resources so here this condition is false so p naught must wait now let's check for P1. What is the condition here? Need is less than or equal to work. What is P1 need here? 1 double 2. 1 double 2 is less than or equal to. What is the work here? 332. Let us check A here. A need 1 whereas A work 3. So 1 is less than or equal to 3. Condition is true. Next to 2 is less than or equal to 3. Condition is true. Next if we take C then what is the need 2 whereas for available resources how many available resources are available in C? 2. So 2 is less than or equal to 2. So condition is true. So what will happen? We can complete the execution of what is the process now? P1. We can complete the execution of process P1. So once P1 process execution is completed, then we can move P1 process to the hard disk. So we have to, we have to add allocated resources of P1 to the available resources. Why? Because no longer P1 is needed now. So work is equal to work plus allocation. So what is the work here? 332 plus P1 allocation resources 200. So that is nothing but 532. Next statement, finish of 1 is equal to, finish of 1 is equal to 2. So here we have to make this one as 2. So which process is executed now? P1 process. Okay. Next year, what is the work here? 532. P1 is over. Now let's check for P2. So need is less than or equal to work. So what is P2 need? 600. So 600 is less than or equal to what is the work here? 532. So 6 less than or equal to 5. Condition is false. If one condition is false, then there is no need to check for B and C. So the entire condition is false. So P2 must wait now. Now let's check for P3. Need is less than or equal to work. What is P3 need? 0 double 1. So 0 double 1 is less than or equal to what is the work here? 532. So 0 less than or equal to 5, true. 1 less than or equal to 3, true. 1 less than or equal to 2, true. So we can complete P3 execution now. So once P3 execution is completed, then we can move P3 to the hard disk. So we can uh, add allocated resources of P3 to the available resources. So what are the allocated resources of P3? 211. So add them to 532. So then we will get 743. So what is the process which we completed now? P3 as well as finish of 3 is equal to 2. So here we have to write as finish of 3 is equal to 2. So it specifies that this process execution is over. 
So B3 is over. Now let's check for P4. Need is less than or equal to 1. So what is P4 need? 431. So 431 is less than or equal to 743. So 4 less than 72. 3 less than or equal to 42. 1 less than or equal to 32. So the entire condition is true. So we can complete P4 execution now. So once P4 execution is over, then it can be moved to the hard disk. So we have to allocate, we have to add allocated resources of P P4 to the work. So what are the allocated resources of P4? 0, 0, 2. So that 0, 0, 2 should be added to work. So the result is 7, 4, 5. So finish of 4 is equal to 2. So it specifies that P4 is executed now. Okay. So next. So P4 is over. Next we have to search from the starting process onwards. Here P0 is not executed as well as P2 is not executed. So let's check for P0 one more time. So P0 need less than or equal to work. What is P0 need? 743 is less than or equal to. What are the available resources? 745. So condition is true. 7 less than or equal to 7. True. 4 less than or equal to 4. True. 3 less than or equal to 5. Condition is true. So we can complete P0 execution. So once P0 execution is over, then we can add allocated resources of P0 to the work. So work is equal to work means 745 plus allocated resources of P0 means 010. So the result is 755. So next finish of 0 is equal to 2. So that means P0 is execution is over. Here we have 2. Next we have what P1. P1 is already over as well as its finish value is 2. Next to P2. P2 is not completed. So let's check for P0. P2. So P2 need is 600. Whereas uh, available resources here are 755. So condition is true. So we can complete P2 execution now. We can complete P2 execution now. So finish of 2 is equal to true. Next, uh, add allocated resources of P P2 to the available resources. So what is equal to uh, 755 plus allocated resources of P2 means 302. So the result is 1057. So 1057 or nothing but uh, uh, initially A, ha A has uh, 10 resources, B has 5 resources, C has 7 resources. So we will get uh, the initial maximum resources finally. So this is about uh, safety algorithm. Uh, in the next video we will see uh, resource request algorithm in bankers algorithm.